I just said, whatever, I'm gonna get shot. I might as well just start shooting right now. Vince Ritchie had to use his firearm when the stakes were high. We sent one of our training partners to meet with Vince Ritchie and find out exactly what happened in the attack and why his concealed carry permit was revoked. I'm here with Vince Ritchie, uh, survivor of the home invasion, uh, the attempted home invasion, uh, right here in his house. What we wanted to do was talk to him, get his story, his thoughts on everything that happened, uh, and actually see kind of the impact that it's had on his home and on his life. You guys appreciate you coming and uh, thank you so us. much. Would love to hear just like kind of a recap of what happened. All the viewers get to watch the video. They've probably seen it on Instagram like thousands of times. But in your own words, uh, why could, what happened? Honestly, uh, leading up to the event, when I was walking up, it was just a regular day walking to my house. So I wasn't prepared for a situation. I wasn't prepared to go into a firefight or combat situation where your adrenaline is heightened or it's like going to the ring where you getting ready. So I was completely zonked out, just finished a workout in the gym, walking up, looking for my keys, got my ear pods on, actually waiting to go on a run with a buddy. So I get to the door. So I was getting up to put my keys in. As I was putting my keys in, and right before they split up, I seen somebody running up. And when I turned, I thought it was my buddy because I had my ear pods on listening to podcasts. I thought he was yelling for me and he couldn't hear me. So he ran up to tell me, let's go. You know what I mean? Let's go for a run. So I turned instantaneously to get annoyed with him for running up on me. And then I looked and seen there's one guy with a mask with a gun to me and the next guy approaching. And he was closer than where you are now. So I was right here. He was, he was on me, you know? So the first thing I thought, he was right here. So the first thing I thought was, I'm not letting him in the house. And I was immediately mad at myself and I immediately got hard on myself. I was like, what? Why would you let this happen? Why do you have ear pods on? How, how are you this stupid that you let this happen? So when I replayed the video, I thought that that moment was going to be like eight seconds. Yeah. But it was, it was like, so it was like I hit him with, I turned around immediately. So when I realized, well, there's two options. I can either, he's going to find my gun if he starts to feel around on me, which I don't want him to do. And I don't want him getting in the house. And I don't want him hitting me in the head with a gun. Just hit him with the fucking tee. So I just turned around and tried to hit him, but he had his arm out. And I had squeezed the tee and realized it was breaking, so I smacked it. I'd smacked the rest of it in his face. And I tried, because the gun was to my back right here. I went around to try to get it. But more parry his hand away from me, but also try to grab it. And he pulled the gun back. So when he pulled the gun back, he spun. So if you spin this way... I went to go forward, and I got to about right here. You could see the line in the video. He had made his way out to here, and when he turned back around, the second guy was coming up. He goes to draw the weapon, and he had a... I knew he had a gun on him because I seen him struggling to get out of his hoodie. And he had just got it out, and when he got it out... Even when I was coming forward, I still thought that I may be able to fight them off even without pulling my gun because I wasn't trying to go to it immediately I also knew the minute they seen it I was going to have to be in a firefight so I wanted it to kind of be out there not right here if it was going to happen and the minute he turned and he turned I knew that getting physical with this guy would only lead to him blasting me from the side even though I was super confident I could, I could move him back I just said whatever I'm going to get shot I might as well just start shooting right now so that's when I backed up drew it Shot from here, he stepped to the right. When he started fire, he fired once. When he started firing, I fired back, and then I stepped over to the left to fire because I guess just from boxing and punch, punch, slide, punch, punch, slide, and going to the left to the right, I knew just step over to the left to avoid getting hit. I knew the further he was going that way, this would block me. And the second that I had a chance, I was out of this hole because I knew that I didn't know if there's more guys coming. I don't know if there's other people over the wall. It happened so quick. And this is so lit up that when this is lit up at night, out there looks so much darker. Yeah. So to me, it was just the black. And then me, and under this light, let me just exit out here. And, and a lot of people say in the video, they're like, oh, he, he pursued after them. I wasn't pursuing after them. per se. I was trying to get to cover. I wasn't avoiding having a fight because there was nowhere for me to avoid going to. I knew I was still in a fight. 
But I was, yeah, so right on the other side, literally on the other side of his door is my dining room. And my wife was sitting there. We just put my daughter to sleep. Well, she had just put her to sleep. My nanny and my wife's best friend were sitting on the other side of the door. So I seen that he went to the right, but I also was under the impression there was more people to the right. And this was gonna be a harder exit that would have left me way more exposed to the street. And as I took off, I was already to the left and like, people think I'm nuts and like, oh, it's just a reaction. No, I, I that's why I felt like the video was, was minutes long because I thought all this through. I was like, I'm not going to the right because it's gonna leave me way more. So I was just cut to the left because the car was pretty much up to where you were standing right here. So I knew I was getting to better cover. So as I came around, I knew he went around too, but I wasn't gonna let him get the jump on me. So I ran around, you can watch in the video, went to the back. And when I got here, he was just getting over the fence. And I don't think he knew I got around there that quick, where if I really wanted to, I could have shot him, where other people might have shot him if they were enraged. Yeah. He was leaving. I wasn't, my mission was not to kill the guy. You know what I mean? Listen, if I, if I had killed the both of them right there on the spot, it is what it is. But that, that wasn't my intention. I was trying to get safe. Yes. He was leaving. He was out of the fight. Let him go. You know what I mean? So I, then I ran. Once I seen he was gone and I actually seen this whole thing clear, I went back around to here. Came a little too exposed. And then I backed up, got down on my knee behind the planter in the car. I knew I could see everything. I said, let me check my gun. Pulled the hand back, seen I had one in the chamber, and I pulled the clip out. And I couldn't know if I had, I didn't know if I had one or two left, but it was very light. I snapped it in, I said, I got two bullets. There's other people. And I just darted around the car, right around the car to the front, came around, cleared all the cars in between, went to the back gate, put my hand up, ran, cleared the whole side of the house to the backyard. And I knew, all right, they're out. But a lot of people won't see in the video when I was ducking down, the kid who went over the fence fired, fired, and then fired. Was he aiming for me? I highly doubt it. I mean, I wasn't competing against Mark Wahlberg, you know what I mean, in the shooter. And this guy also hopped the gate and fired and fired. I think it was Jay was just, they were just squeezing because they were running or they were squeezing just to scare me off because they weren't expecting me to fire fight. I don't know if they were strategically laying down suppression fire. I just, but so I'm hearing all this while I'm ducking down. And the first thing that went to my mind was, I won round one. It was like a boxing match. I won round one. I was kind of thrilled. But I also knew there's no way I'm getting out of this alive because I'm hearing gunshots. I don't know who's in the corner. I can't stay here. I can't stay in one spot because I'm going to get my fucking brain. I'm going to get my brains blown out. So I just darted around and said, I got two shots and a knife. I'm going to make a count. And I just ran around. But it, my attention wasn't to find someone to kill them at an angle. My attention was because I was still in a fight and I was going to win the fight and I'm not letting people in the house. So the police arrive. Um, Maybe about five minutes later, they kind of said it. Yeah. And then uh, what's, how's that interaction go? I still had my shirt off because I was making sure that, well, I, hadn't, I didn't just put it back on because I whipped it off and I got in the house. I came out, saw my hands up. I said, hey, I'm a CCW holder. I said, I'm the homeowner. I, I feared for my life and I got into a gunfight. They said, where's the firearm? I said, it's locked inside my house. I said, it's safe, it's safe, it's locked inside my house, it's unloaded. I said, I'm, and I'm not giving you my firearm. Not because I wanted to be, you know, adversarial with the police, because I, I support the police a lot, actually. But because I knew that <clears throat> they're gonna come, they're gonna do an investigation, they're gonna impound my gun, and I'm gonna be here empty-handed with a broken front door. Yeah. The same place I was when they robbed my house with a broken back door and feeling vulnerable. And I knew my wife was in feel vulnerable, so I was not giving up my sword, you know? That was my lifeline, was the firearm. Uh, you know, they came, detectives came a couple days later. They asked me questions about what happened. I had handed in the video because I felt that I didn't do anything wrong. I restrained myself from, I could have shot both those guys in the back as they were fleeing. I did it, I didn't fire. I acquired my CCW legally. I was carrying a legal registered gun in my name. Everything was 100% complete. I was on my property. They ran down on me and fired at me. I felt that if this was a time that I was 100% justified, 
I this was that one time in my life that this was 100% the way it was supposed to work out. You know what I mean? So I, I was honest with them. They went through the process. The sheriff's department now calls me a couple of days later, and they're like, hey, you never, uh, you never informed us you're in a shooting. I said, I called the police a minute later. Yeah. And I said, through, my, through the training for the CW class, I said, put the gun away, contact the police. Yeah. Put the gun in a safe place, contact the police. They actually said put the gun in the ground to contact the police, but I didn't feel like that was a safe place with this going on, so I locked it up. The police was already coming, and I said, you know, I, you know, it's all over the news. And I said, well, I'm sorry, I, I didn't email you. Um, I'll send you the report, I'll send you everything. You know, it's been very crazy. I got shot at from the house. My wife is going through a mental hard time after that. It was, it was a lot going on. And then they said, well, right now you're temporarily suspended from concealed carry. And I said, you know, I really need this. Right, because, you know, I'm, I'm vulnerable. A couple of days later, they called me and said it's revoked. Does anyone say, well, I need to get it back? Where is there a potential to get it back? I asked, is there an appeal process? They said, no. Zero appeal process. Who fair contact? Nobody. The advice I would give to anybody, you know, is to stay calm through the process of going through the process of getting it because it is a lot of responsibility. It's a lot of paperwork. It's a lot of stuff. And I even doubted myself on getting it. About getting the CCW. About process. going for the CCW. But when that happened, I realized that CCW was the only thing that stood in my way, of, stood in front of me to protect my family. Without that, the trauma, the who knows what could have happened, the irreparable damage that could happen to my wife. They might have beat a skull in with a gun. They might have pissed her with me and killed me. They might have shot me. Anything could have happened. They could have killed my baby. Anything could have happened if they came to the house. And that CCW protected my family that day. And we have a right in America, in the Second Amendment, to protect ourselves and to arm ourselves. And I think that every American at this point, at this current climate, with crime being so high everywhere, needs to protect themselves. Because it is, it is the equalizer. If it was my wife walking in and she's 104 pounds and two guys run down, if she's proficient enough, she can do the same thing with a cup of tea and a gun. You know, if it's four guys at six foot five coming in trying to grab her, that gun is going to be what stops her. Yeah. What stops them. Yeah. I, I hear you and I fully agree, but there's a lot of people who watch who, who comment and they're going to say, well, that's what the police are for. What do you, like, would the police have done, like, would the police have detected you in this situation? Well, listen, I think the police really want to do their job. I fully stand behind the police. But there's a saying, when seconds matter, police are minutes away. There's nothing they could do. They can't, they're not here. You know what I mean? They, 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 they can't protect my wife. You know, by the time they get here, the damage is done. You know, and it's not their fault. You know what I mean? It's just, it's a reaction, you know? If I was at work and it happened to her, it's not me being failing to be a good husband. I was at work. Vince Ritchie had to use his firearm when the stakes were high. Not only was his life in danger, but his wife and five-month-old daughter were just behind that door. Vince drove the criminals away and displayed perfect firearms restraint, letting them leave when they turned to run. He called the police, he cooperated with investigators, and he did everything correctly. But that didn't stop the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department from wrongfully suspending his concealed carry permit. So I want you to imagine this. What if you find yourself facing multiple armed attackers who are willing to hurt you or your loved ones? And what if the justice system treats you like a criminal for just defending your family? A membership with the U.S. Concealed Carry Association helps you prepare for all those what if moments. USCCA membership gives you access to over $3,600 worth of self-defense education and training materials, depending on the membership level you choose. And every membership comes with access to self-defense liability insurance the instant you join, in case you ever need monetary resources to defend yourself in court. We even have real self-defense stories from USCCA members who have battled the legal system on our YouTube channel. To see all of our USCCA testimonials, or to activate your membership today. The links are in the description below. And for those who join today, we have an exclusive bonus package waiting just for you.
The USCCA is not an insurance company. A policy has been issued to the USCCA. That policy provides the association and its members with self-defense liability insurance subject to its terms, conditions, limitations, and exclusions. Contact 1-800-674-9779 with any questions.